Mr. Speaker. Good gentleman, 27. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I don't do this often, nor will I, but I, <clears throat> I think that we're on the verge of making a mistake here today. I would refer the members to Article 3, Section 23 of our Constitution. The first line says, the legislature shall have no authority to establish the rate of its compensation and expense by law. Everywhere else in code, compensation is tied to the benefit package. Now, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't reference that here in the Constitution, but everywhere else in our code, to be consistent, yeah, the benefits are part of the compensation, and it says the legislature shall have no authority to establish the rate of its compensation. No authority. That was wise. Because any, on any given year, and Mr. Speaker, you and I have seen where we have, uh, every two years, the, the Citizens Committee on Legislative Compensation gives us a, a recommendation. We have until the 25th day of each of those, uh, the first day of the first regular session to uh, take that up or not. And uh, that's, that's the only time that the legislature, and by the Constitution, that's the only time we have to interfere or intervene in their recommendation. You and I have both seen it where we have, we've accepted it, as we did this year, and there's been other times where we have, through a concur concurrent resolution, rejected uh, or modified the Citizens Committee's uh, recommendation. In this year's letter to from the Citizens Committee uh, to the Secretary of State, to the State Controller, and uh, I was CC'd, as many of you were as well. It's a three-page letter. It addresses salary. It addresses unvouchered expense allowances. It, it addresses venture or vouchered expense allowances. It, it addresses requirements for payment and lastly, it addresses additional benefits, colon, retirement, medical, dental, and, and, uh, and life insurance. And if I may have uh, the permission of the body, I would like to read that last paragraph. Hearing none, the gentleman may read. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. The committee recommends continuation of the system of medical, dental, life insurance, and retirement benefits as provided for other state employees and other services, including telephone postage and stationery, as provided for uh, the 62nd Idaho Legislature. The committee further recommends the, uh, that individual members of the legislature seek the most advantageous and cost-effective travel arrangements, including advanced purchase fares wherever possible. Where have we heard that? That's another subject. That uh, is clear to me that those that sat in these seats before us wrestled with these issues. And we've heard that the, the, gospel, the, that the body across the rotunda changed it and then changed it back. Might, it, uh, might that, those actions have been that they went where they shouldn't have, did not reconsider, and then there was another bill to move it back to the way it was. And I believe that, that history will bear that out. We have a chance today to reconsider this. Uh, I think it's, it's good government policy that we don't set our salaries, our compensation, which include benefits, uh, because on any given year we'll be a race to the top. The next year it may be a race to the bottom. I don't think that this is the, you know, that, that's not in keeping with the spirit uh, and, and the letter of the Constitution, specifically Article 3, Section 23. So uh, that, that's why I felt it, uh, you know, that I would come out of the chair and debate this. Uh, I, I just feel that whenever we go here, uh, this prerogative has been, has been wisely taken away from the legislature in the past, and I don't think we start crowding that today or in the future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.